Welcome to the Big Biz Show. You want fast-talking, hard-hitting discussions on business and finance? Maybe with a barroom slant and some really salty peanuts? We're not counting calories. We're counting cash. Before we get to the man with the financial plan, meet the money team, Costa, Mary, and Greg. Now, Captain Finance himself, Sully. Wherever you are watching, wherever you are listening, welcome to the Big Biz Show. In other parts of the world, it's also known as the Large Financial Program, but I host it on a different network. Uh, I'm Costa, sitting in for Sully. Uh, I had an issue this morning, had to go to the eye doctor. I popped out, um, yep. and we wish him uh, the best. Of course, Mary Burke Godwin with us, as usual, our executive producer, Greg Todoroff. And in studio, we always love to have him, because he's so good looking and has the greatest hair on earth, the uh, Big Biz Show financial analyst, Howie Font, with us. I don't even pay him that much to say that. Uh, no. Like it, no. And I read, I read it just like you type it Thank out. Every, you. Time. <laughs> every time. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's, you got to build a brand. Yeah. Like, Did you have a good absolutely. summer? It was eventful. Yeah. I mean, there was, there was a lot of crap that went on. I think so. <laughs> even, even financially, when you look at you know, all that stuff. Yeah. No. I, I'm used to, and we say it quite a bit, that summers are lower impact, less vo- there's literally less volume in the market, so there's less volatility, less up and down. Sure. Um, people are, you know, they, money managers have lives too. I'm not supposed to say that, but they, <laughs> <laughs> they like to take vacations. They like to take vacations, and they do it a lot in the summer. They have yeah. children and. Sell, you know, damn you, sell! No, it really, you would, especially the bond market, it's crazy how much the boss being away affects like how much actual t- traction gets done. You're not going to let the analysts, the analysts are there just to make sure like, hey, if things tank, you, you can buy or sell very quickly and okay. act, act right there. But you're not making moves. Yeah. It's just because the boss is away doesn't mean you get to make multi-million dollar trades. Sure. That makes no. sense. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I am used to this summer activity where, you know, there's not as much going on. But we had the unfortunate event in uh, Pennsylvania with former President Trump. Huge market activity. Yeah. We have, it's an election year, so we had that on the Democratic and Republican side. Market moved both times. Mm-hmm. The unwinding of the yen trade, which we talked about. Just the difference between interest rates in Japan and interest rates here. Mm-hmm. And, um, y- you know, it, w- this is all in the background of rate cuts and high inflation coming down. So, yeah, it's been quite the summer. Mm-hmm. It, it, do, can you look at... A long answer to your short question. No, no, no. I, I, and we, that's why you're on the show, to explain it to cement heads like myself that, you know, in, in very, very dumbed down terms. Can you look, though, at parts of the calendar year? And I'm not going to say be able to predict completely, but, you know, Christmas, believe it or not, Christmas now is right around the corner. Yeah. Do you see, start seeing a trend down in people not spending as much money? Because they, as Eddie Murphy would say, you got to be able to afford the GI Joe with the Kung Fu grip for your kid and all that good mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, how does that fluctuate? Yeah, the, I think there are points where you see certain behavior. Like if we see a spike in consumer spending right now or in uh, big box stores, uh, purchase orders, mm-hmm. I mean, everything for Christmas needs to be sent on a ship from the other side of the world by mid-October at the latest. Right. So th- that's a leading in- indicator. You can look at that and see how things are going to flow. And who doesn't love walking into uh, Costco on uh, <laughs> Memorial Day weekend and already seeing <laughs> Halloween stuff? And then oh, July yeah. 4th, it's... I bought my yeah. blue pill. I bought, I, I bought a... <laughs> I bought a ghost pillow yesterday at Target. I did it. Yeah. I did it. Yeah. I, and then, I was that's why they do it, because people will on buy it. I was like, this is the cutest little ghost $5 pillow I've ever seen. But now, yeah. now all the Christmas yeah. crap is on the end caps. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, all, stuff, yep. and it's not even Halloween, and the Christmas Halloween stuff has be, been pushed to the middle by right. the mixed nuts. Christmas yeah. used to be held back by Thanksgiving, though. That used to be like an involatable barrier. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. when does it start now? It's Well, thanks. Is, do we even have Thanksgiving anymore? Yeah. It's like Halloween, boom. Yeah. Christmas. All right, Howie Font, our uh, financial analyst here on the Big Biz Show. When we get back, we're going to talk about uh, talk about that jobs market. There's great jobs numbers, and then the government comes out and says, "Well, there's really not good jobs numbers." Yeah. Who's right? What are we left to think? <laughs> we'll let you know as the Big Biz Show continues after this. Keep it here.
And over 75 countries, all the ships you see on the American Forces Network. It is the Big Bay Show. To our brave and women of the United States Armed Forces, as always, thank you for what you do for us. Costa, Mary Bird Godwin, Greg Todorov, Sully, and of course, Howard Howie Crash Font. God bless our military men and women serving our country overseas and underway on the American Forces Network. Now, a proper introduction yep. for our friend Howie Font. Roll the graphic, please. Oh, my goodness. Roll the graphic. We have a graphic. For yeah, we do. Somewhere. Yeah. Graphic, huh? No, no, no don't, please. <laughs> Your filet right here. Hold on. And then, is he going to hop on me? Watch. If he does, I will. How we got We're to done. town last night? We took him to dinner. And, and look what he had for dinner. I had that. I, the reason I put it on the air with us uh, today is because you're going to talk about China, and that is the del delicacy in China. So say, was, <laughs> it, uh, was it crunchy? Uh, it, actually, it, it fell. It, it was a praying mantis. It, crazy. Oh yeah. It, I mean, they, they were this big. On, it it came eye. straight down. It didn't come in at an angle. It came straight down. Well, look at and the look landed on, on the tuna tartar. Inside uh, or outside? Uh, outside. Look, at the look on Howie's outside. face when he's like, "Okay, I'm done." Every Total time, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> your face. Uh, Mom, what is that? Hey. <laughs> and you just happen to have a camera on. Really a pleasure to be here. No, it was Thank on there so for much. so long, I took my phone out. Wow. And I think it's very cinematic how I did it. Yeah, it? I was thinking, yeah. it looks professional. You know, so after they made the stuff. female... By the way, Kenny Rogers just... in the background. Did I was going to say, it looked like Dave in the background there. Him. I like I how you finished with Howie's disgust. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I can't help but looking at Kenny Rogers. Beautiful out. Have you been to the website dudes that look like Kenny Rogers.com? No. Because this guy over his left shoulder... Oh, yeah. Oh, there, there we go. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, there, there. Oh. Can you sing Lady for us? No, don't. Only if he holds the can microphone. You the, like can you sing the gambler? Count hey, Howie, I want to talk to you about what we talked about last week. Um, and, of course, we talked about China being a leading indicator for uh, for uh, inflation coming forth. Mm -hmm. But then, it, it, then we talk about Hong Kong exchange has now called the top of the uh, Chinese stock market, uh, which is down... 9% today. That's the biggest drop in 16 years. Wow. It's dropping like a tummy tuck on a plus size model. Yep. Um, dropping like uh, Dick Cheney's hunting partner. Yep. Oh. Docking, dropping like acid before Woodstock concert. <laughs> yep. Dropping like Mike's uh, self respect. That's pretty um, impressive. You got a I, lot of those. Can I, wow. can I ask you what's going on? Why, why do we care about the Chinese economy? Yeah, so we're watching it because we don't want the reinflation story to happen in the States. So China actually, as we talked about last week, has had de uh, deflation, not disinflation, deflation for the last five quarters. And so they've been putting a lot of stimulus into their economy, COVID levels of stimulus, billions of dollars into the banks. They've lowered the um, reserve requirements that the banks have. And it's really pushed the Chinese stock market up. Today is important because it's kind of calling the top and saying, OK, fine, we're up 25 percent on the year. 21% on the month, yeah. but we're down 9% today. We're done. Okay, we, we were talking a, a little bit ago where deflation was like, you, we talked about deflation is like freezing to death instantly. Done. Gone. Yes. We're inflation, a little bit more fun, drinking yourself to death. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what we do in the US. Yes, wow. we, death by inflation. That's okay. why I love inflation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I think that's apps because it causes a hangover in the economy, right? I mean, you. You get a little bit of good stuff. There's a little bit more money. The stock market is the first to get pumped with inflation. But then all of a sudden you see prices. And we've had this inflation in goods and wages. Yeah. Um, and it has hurt the economy for the last three years. But wait, so something unprecedented, which has never happened in the U.S., I, I don't think other than on 9-11. Mm -hmm. On 9-11, I believe this happened. The Chinese government put a halt on the, on the Chinese stock market last week. Yeah, week. so they're way more heavy-handed than we are. But think I about mean, it. Putting a, yeah. putting a stop on all trading of equities for an entire week um, that would be like grounding the entire say, is it air grounding them? Oh, I thought it was like a punishment. <laughs> put it, put it well, no, that, <laughs> well, it is. You know, no, it, is, it is for the it's like, Well, it's market. like when we put curbs in. Explain curbs and, 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 and auto stops in the U.S. stock markets. Well, okay, so differences that, in kind, in, but we do have something kind of similar. We have um, the circuit breakers. Circuit breakers. So if you Cold have... Curve, right. Yeah, exactly. So if a stock drops 7% in a given amount of time during the day... We're done trading. We stopped for 15 stop minutes. For 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Right. Yep. Stop down. Everybody settle down. Yep. Go to your corners. Right. And then we have various other in increasing circuit So when we have these volatile days like this. Yeah. You've right. seen in the past where we're looking, we're just going to yeah. stop down. It's, it, it's, to, it's to prevent things like, like the crash Thanks. in 20, to prevent things what happened on Black Monday in October of 1987 mm -hmm. or 6 or something like that. I wouldn't know. China, though, says, yeah, I know. 
Thanks for bringing that up. One more day, I would have been over it. Yeah. Uh, China sets the whole thing down for 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 a week. Yeah. So now, now that's a that, that's a big that's a big deal. <laughs> it, it it certainly is. They announced there were going to be an, some new policy announcements. They said we're going to take a week break. Things have been pretty crazy. I mean, they, it really was like something you talk to your soon-to-be ex about. It was really weird. Yeah. And they did. If the, I had a nickel. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so they had made the announcements last night, and people were saying, "Okay, there's going to be the announcements. They're going to restart the market. They're going to give a list a little bit more stimulus." They gave nothing. So now people think we've reached the top. This is as far as the stimulus gets us. Well, but and, the stimulus thing's yeah. interesting because I think it's smart that they gave no new stimulus. Because mm -hmm. look what happened in the U.S. here. We got COVID, we had to have stimulus. People had to pay the rent, good idea. Yep. Then we had second stimulus. Then we had a third stimulus. Oof. Let me tell you something. Going back to 1940, every time you put money flow into the system, inflation follows. Every single time you put money, that much money in the system, inflation follows. We could have predicted, we did predict this. It was going to happen. This is sort of, uh, I'm going to get on Chinese side here, because there is no new stimulus there. Now, is that going to help inflation, or is it going to be a non-issue in your mind? Or should they, have, should they be stimulating either way, doing quantitative and easing, which is printing up your own money to buy your own securities, taking the profit and running the company? And by the way, country, and by the way, we do it, we're just the least dirty shirt in the hamper. Well, I won't get into our normal Fed conversation with the QE. I completely agree with right. you there. But Chinese deflation was risking death for them, and it was great for us because it was lowering import costs and um, making our markets, frankly, a safe haven. Mm -hmm. So here's it, the good it, news. Yeah. <laughs> here's was, the good news. Is there good news? Here, yes. OK. Where's the safe haven? Close to status, she need us? That's exactly <laughs> right, Senorita. All right, that works for me. Oh, that's not the Mexican national anthem. It's Superman. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Captain Finance. Did you just I know, I know. <laughs> Because the next American, you have them ready to cook them. I'm not ready for all this. But it's true. So U.S. is a safe haven, right? At the end of the, the U.S. becomes the safe haven. Yeah. But now that the Chinese government has said we need to really tamp down on the deflation, they're pushing inflation. And they're the world's manufacturing hub. Well, they make yeah. a lot of antibiotics. To, so there's the good news. All yeah. of our antibiotics. Are, can I tell you why you have I'm a second not? Wave so, and this is a great analogy and why I'm not afraid of China. Um, North Korea or Russia. We're China's biggest client, biggest customer. Yep. Ain't nothing gonna happen there. Russia is one sanction away from being a banana republic. You try, hey, so you'll go try to get some Funyuns on their shelves, pal. Ooh. It's empty. Never. Okay? You try, go try to get yourself some Baco bits, pal. I know you, I know you do every day. <laughs> um, and then of course, North Korea, same thing. Sanctions, economically speaking, they cannot afford to mess with us, which is why when you hear stories about and I'm talking to you when you start hiding under the bed, when you start hearing about Russia. Yeah. And this is why. That's Joint why. war games in the North. Yeah, no. These are so tender economies. Right yeah, we're, we're, we're so intertwined that any decoupling of any level is just going to be pain for both sides, right? I mean, the argument would be you need to build up our own manufacturing capacity just to have a little bit of a defense. But no, we've built the last 25 years, this globalized world. We and not to be political, China that's why, it, yeah. that'd be political, Greg, but that's why Howie likes Cheddar. 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 With a Y? They just that, said just Cheddar. cheddar. Yeah. <laughs> that's my Donald Trump impersonation. Oh my God. It's a good one word. Um, I got a Bill, I got a Bill, I got a Bill yeah. Clinton impersonation. Way to stay us. Wait, so I, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's I like really that one. Good. I think Cheddar is pretty good too. Yeah. Uh, so what are we taking away here? What, what's, what's, are, we, are we more optimistic now? This or are is, we less optimistic? This is the... Um, well, it's good for the United States. We're that safe haven. That's the important takeaway for today in the market. Um, but things to watch out for are things that could make the Fed trip. They're trying to go for that soft landing and something like China pushing another wave of inflation while we just lowered rates a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, makes me a little bit nervous. Can I say one last time? Every one of you should go buy the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Um, the Fed Reserve is not a federal agency, it's just overseen by Congress. No one knows who owns the Federal Reserve. It's highly suspected that it's the banks that use the Federal Reserve. And um, when's the last time, um, do you remember when interest rates were zero or sub-zero? Mm -hmm. I remember that for- Was your mortgage rate zero? Well, actually, bad analogy. Was your credit card rate zero? No. Was your car loan zero? No. Was your student loan zero? No. The reason I don't say mortgage is mortgage, mortgage follows a long bond. Yeah. But imagine being able to borrow from the discount window at zero and then start- <laughs> Yeah, beta banks- And charge 18. Mm -hmm. Read the creature from Jekyll Island. There needs to be a better system. 
Um, because, and by the way, it's a noble, it's a noble cause because the Fed is, is, is charged with keeping interest rates low, keeping unemployment uh, 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 maximum and, and stable prices. Okay? Sounds noble. Mm -hmm. Unless it was started by every rich family. And, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, although I love Twin Peaks. Mm -hmm. So I'm just Best. telling you. Yep. Take it away, James. I knew it was coming. Howie, thank it you, buddy. I appreciate it. it. Glad to be here. Can't wait for Vivo. Howie Fong. The job of the North. I'm telling you right now. He ran for, I was, telling, I was telling Kirk Huntsman this morning, he ran for city council, he's 21. When he turns, he's 30 now, he turns 40. We do a super PAC, we get him president, we're gonna rule the world. We'll rule the world! I'm, I'm fine with just a super PAC. I want to hear it. about the platform he ran on. What changes were you going to make, young yeah. man? Yeah. Parking tickets. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm going to kill everybody. <laughs> like, yeah. A sewage system for the town and all that. Like, oh, wow. oh, seriously, they were like. What town was it? Uh, Tallahassee. And okay, enough, enough, enough of that. We are in the Loft 100 studios. We're in sunny Southern California. Hope everybody is having a great day, as always. Thank you for being along for the ride. The ride is called The Big Biz Show. I am Costa. Sitting in the middle is Mary Bird Godwin, of course, Greg Todorov, our executive producer, and Sully. Right there. Good stuff. We are brought to you by Prudential. Let Prudential be your rock for retirement. Also brought to you by Bayer Advance. Better science, better results. Starbucks Coffee, of course, is a sponsor. Not to mention Bloomin' Brands, their fine family restaurants, including Outback Steakhouse, and of course, Taylor Guitars, our guitar sponsor. Look who's here, Dan Negroni, hey. speaker, CEO, consultant, coach, good friend, athlete, and a handsome SOB oh, here in the studio. Ain't got the why aren't you on the cover? Why, why aren't you on the cover of Men's Health? You need to be on the cover. Like you are. You Men's are, Health cover. <laughs> done. Oh, done. Um, let's talk about uh, our need for reading. Um, and I am guilty as charged. I, I'm a voracious reader, but now I'm a voracious audiobook fall asleeper. I am, yeah, I am an audiobook gal. I like it in the car. Um, and you know, people listen to podcasts. I've been, I moved from podcasts to listen to books now. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah. Just for a while. Yeah. yeah. Like, like if you ever read uh, Tim Ferriss' Tools for Titans. Yeah. Or For I Work With Or Dan Negroni's. Yeah, Chasing Relevance. Chasing Relevance. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, it, it's interesting. Trish Hunt's The Unstoppable. Yeah. From Stuck to Unstoppable. Um, even... I, the other day, I, I listened to Old Man in the Sea. It was fantastic. Yeah. Art of War, nice. fantastic. Yeah. Listen to the classics. That was to go to sleep. That was to go to yeah, sleep. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> but you maintain that middle schools and high schools have stopped reading. I think, uh, you know, that thing called the device mm -hmm. has Ugh. changed our attention span. The rewiring of America um, in 2010 when the iPhone came to theaters near you and homes yeah. near you and everyone uses them, we don't have the attention span. What happens when they get to, to, to junior college, which is high school with ashtrays, Mike, or they go to college <laughs> or they go to work? What, th there's got to be a... a, be a an Great this question. Is... Yeah, I think The Atlantic just did a study on that of elite, elite colleges, Columbia, Georgetown, uh, I think it was Penn, um, and the professors are saying kids don't want to read. No. They don't have the propensity to read. They don't know how to stay focused. It's, I'm noticing it with my daughters. They don't want to read. Did I, you read as a kid, though? I went in and out of phases reading, but I, I did when I was real little, and then some teenage years I was out of it, and then I started probably at an English teacher that inspired me, you know, and I've been a voracious reader ever since. And I, I, Dan, I have to believe your premise that it is the device, because I remember our, my girls reading cover to cover oh. Harry Potter. Every yep. one of them. Yeah. Yeah. And those are not small books. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Right. Um, and, and, and it was Hardy Boys when we were uh, ancient, me and Dan were kids. And it was things like that. And I think, look, the way that we consume media and news is fantastic. We get instant gratification. We get it right now on the spot. But, there, but this is the, it's that, changed, the bad it's side. It's changed their mind. It's changed their brains. Dan, how much does it have to do with the fact that schools really don't give out hard 8,000 pound textbooks anymore everything is on a device or you download it to I your... think yeah the device has pervaded everything so I mean I think it's a whole bunch of reasons right um, I think we don't have the patience we don't have the wherewithal 
We're not requiring them to go deep. We don't take their phones away during school. We let them have they, it. They're starting to which, now. Did you know that? California is doing that. It's one of yeah. the one states which that's is taking one of the their, their phones away. Solutions. Yeah. So since you're a coach to CEOs and yes. you're a coach to folks that are entering the work market, yeah. those people, what is the end result here is going to be, have to be productivity at some point. Is, is, that, is that what we're scared I mean, of? Or think, what do you think? The, look, cut to the chase. It's performance and productivity. And it's how the new workforce, Gen Zs, show up. And it's interesting because if you look at the science behind all the studies, and we just did a study of about 400,000 people globally, all generations, you'll see that Gen Zs really want to go deep, but they have a very hard time initiating. Because they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to research. Exactly. They don't know how to initiate anything. They want the guide for everything because it's here and someone has always told them and they haven't had a FIO like we did figure it out. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's interesting. You just talk about that. We did a book report as kids. We had to do a study. You had... Your parents would buy a set of encyclopedias, probably go deeper than they should have. World book. It. Oh, yeah. And, and you put the book out under E, and I wanted to do this. It comes to the Earth, so I look up Earth, and I have to read this. Yes. And yeah. I can't just type in a search yeah. word. Yeah. And, and, and it was. Well, within two seconds. It was a very yeah. tactile GPT. thing yeah. that you had to do. Yeah. I, think, I think my question for you is you talk to um, your, uh, your clients and, and your, the folks that you coach a lot about what drives them internally. Is yes. this changing? You, I mean, are, 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 are kids and, and young adults and Gen Zers losing their sense of self just because they're constantly in I don't this direction here? It's a great question. I mean, it's almost like we set this up, which yeah. we didn't yeah. actually. Um, Gen Zs are super motivated by external forces and not internal forces. So it's exactly the opposite is happening. With the device, it's about what's going on with social media. What do other people think of me? That Likes informs and me. And shares. Right, instead mm -hmm. of who am I, right, the self, how you, we grew up, mm -hmm. which is you understand who you are, so internal. Um, and so it's a big, big problem because they don't know how to initiate, they don't know how to start. But if you coach them, they will be great because they have a lot of other skills. But these skills are we got to reinforce. But there are also um, issues with one-on-one -on -one communication. I know you and I have talked about this yes. a lot because everything is done via text. Yeah. They're breaking up via text or doing, and no punctuation or grammar, which is a whole yeah. other side conversation. But oh, if they don't know the difference between they're there and they're there. Oh, that's kills the word. Me. Oh, that's they gorgeous. say especially. Oh. Dead to me. Well, there's that's two, 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 and two. That bothers me. That's you know, that's 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 I brought that up for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, if they're trying, you know, their communication with their boss or their coworkers yeah, or, you know, that one-on-one -on -one, um, communication it's so different now you and so you have to build trust you have to they they don't feel safe because they are just going by the scroll and no. by the information so they haven't figured out a sense of self so here doesn't happen in grade school doesn't happen in high school doesn't happen in college they get to the workplace and everyone says you should know all this by now what's wrong with all you people yeah. but we have to teach it in the workplace and that's what we're working with the people in the workplaces how do you teach it our friend of the show long time dan negroni speaker ceo coach consultant chief launch officer's website superhandsomeguy.com yes you know, dan negroni.com <laughs> Aren't we all this website. love? <laughs> I like the all website. This love. It's, yeah. it's a fantastic That's an book. old picture, actually. But, but we are, but we are uh, training ourselves yeah. to ingest information at the speed of light, so yes. we don't need attention spans anymore, in some respects. Um, and I think that's a problem. Shorter attention spans, as you mentioned, uh, to your point, this is something that you bring well, up. Well, I think the, the TikTok generation with shorter attention spans. Our AI. The next frontier is how do we connect people and technology in a way that serves us as human beings and serves the world and serves business. And that is the next frontier and that's what we're focusing on. Do you suggest that even if it's an e-reader like a Kindle, that we reintroduce books and reading into the I, curriculum you know, versus, I have, versus I just- I haven't formulated an opinion on that because I'm a listener and I read two books, I listen to two books a week mm -hmm. and four or five podcasts and you know, my feed and do all that stuff and I'm able to figure out all the information. Here's the problem. They understand depth. They don't understand breath. Because of the phone, they don't come to strategy with all these things are interrelated. It's just what thing am I looking at yeah. now? And we have to re-expose them to understand there's a great big world out there. There are all these different things that are going to change with the strategy. And so you got to figure that out. One last question. Sure. If you had a corporate client that said to you, I have this workforce and they seem to do everything like this. There's a productivity problem and an attention problem. At this point, without actually forming a, an opinion about the reading thing, yeah. what would you tell them today 
where we're at, how they can resolve that issue, or, or is it just you have, because you, because you are famous in saying, not only does the workforce coming into this have to be malleable, but so does the, yeah. so does so, the, so the employer. They have to figure out a way to move from boss to coach, and to coach those kids in the way that they need to be coached, and you can use technology for that now. There's great stuff out there. There's a thing called DanNegroni.com. Yes, they can just, there you yeah. go. <laughs> right, stand at DanNegroni.com. Uh, we will see you next week, my friend. Dan Negroni, speaker, CEO, coach, consultant, chief launch officer. Loft 100 Studios, The Big Biz Show, and our affiliates and our hosts are not registered investment advisors or broker dealers. Our show hosts make no commitment that the purchase of securities of companies profiled or otherwise mentioned in our programming are suitable or advisable for any person or that an investment in such securities will be profitable in general. Given the nature of the company's profile and the lack of an active trading market for the securities, investing is highly speculative and carries a certain high degree of risk. We profile selected publicly traded and privately held companies on our program. Most of these companies that we profile have provided compensation to Loft 100 Studios and its hosts for the profile coverage. From time to time, we sell shares of the companies profiled in the open market that we receive as compensation for coverage of client companies. But never sell stocks if we are speaking about interviewing or covering a public company who has paid comp Station. Specific questions on compensation can be obtained by contacting producer at salientgroup.com. Listeners should verify all claims and do their own due diligence before investing in any securities mentioned on this program. Investing in securities is speculative and carries a high degree of risk. We encourage our investors to invest carefully and read the investor information available at the websites on the Securities and Exchange Commission at sec.gov and or the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA, at www.finra.org. Five countries, all the ships at sea on the American Forces Network. As always, we salute the brave men and women of our United States Armed Forces for what they do, what they have done for us. Coming to you live from the Loft 100 Studios here in Southern California, I am Costa. That is Mary Bird Godwin. That man right there is Greg Todorov. Hello. And of course, the man behind the bar is always, it's Sully. There you go. Greg got a call from a shareholder of a company called Singulate. That's right. What's the ticker single on that again? C-I-N-G. Saying you gotta talk to this guy, Shane Schaffer. Uh, it could be Schaefer, but nobody put the pronunciation on there, Greg. Uh -oh. Mr. Oh. So we're just gonna call him Schaffer. He could be saying it wrong, it's Schaffer, but if he says Schaefer, we're just gonna say he's saying it wrong. It's Schaefer. Uh, he is the CEO and chairman of Singulate, and of course, uh, Singulate.com is our website. That's with a C. Uh, maybe we can show that website up there in a second here. But uh, Dr. Shane Schaffer, Schaefer, uh, life-changing work. Uh, that's worth the wait. This is about um, ADHD. Okay. Mm. Listening. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. That's the difference, Mary. I think mm -hmm. you're ADD. I don't think you're ADHD. I think I just shut up. Just shut up. I, I'm, oh, a, I'm ADHD. I. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you a story? When I was married, my wife at the time bought a book called Driven to Distraction, and she goes, "I, I think, I think this is you." <laughs> And there's like the big Ten Commandments of ADD, like falls asleep while reading, interrupts, snaps judgment. Uh, hi, uh, so she gives me the book and I start reading the book. And I'm like, oh my God, I could have changed it. Well, Roger, for example, I could have said Sully. Sully. Like every single name. With you. I'm all those things too. Bring in the doctor. Bring him in. Dr. Schaefer Schaffer. <laughs> <laughs> See? Hey, hold on, I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> By the way, first of all, is it Schaffer or Schaefer? It's, uh, it's Schaefer, but, okay. uh, you know, call me Shane. You're saying Have you ever met named Schaefer? You're sh stop interrupting. Name. You're saying it wrong. <laughs> He's like, going, <laughs> I've got a case study here that's going to Harvard eventually. <laughs> we do have the perfect ADHD news here, I tell you. This is great. <laughs> can, I, can I tell you something? I've named it the bug because I don't think, I think I have it under control in so much that I don't think I could work a mixing board and a soundboard, have notes on you, have a camera here, a microphone, people in studio, and you on Zoom without sort of having that sort of bug that I call it, uh, yep. if you can tame that bug. But I, I, maybe I could, you know, you're the doctor. Uh, maybe I should be hospitalized. Actually, yeah. No, you're describing it perfectly. I mean, there's, really, there's three components to it. Inattentiveness, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. Um, you know, as you, uh, you think of kids, you start, you, know, you think of that little boy, right? Who probably encompasses all three of those elements. 
uh, you take the younger female or the little girl, they oftentimes don't have the impulsivity or hyperactivity. But then now let's move into adulthood. And look, I know I have a little bit of ADHD, but if you look at adulthood, that impulsivity can sometimes still be there where you interrupt people. Um, the hyperactivity typically is gone by then. Hey, Shane, hold the- on a second. I'm buying a car right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was joking around. I go, squirrel. Yeah, uh, he said, no, no, it's, it's true. <laughs> I have there, to there ask- might be a squirrel over here, so yeah. So what is, you call this the, the genesis of Singulate. Um, wh- how is that found? What is it, first of all? How is it founded? How has it evolved? So on and so forth. Yeah, so um, the company started with uh, me and two other guys. So Dr. Raul Silva, Dr. Matthew Brahms, are, these are two of the most preeminent key opinion leaders in ADHD. And uh, I had the good fortune of while I was at Novartis working with these guys. And fast forward now to 2013, we're at a barbecue, July 4th, at, uh, at Dr. Silva's house. And it could have been the perfect mixture of Coors Light and barbecue, but uh, <laughs> those guys... Those guys were lamenting the fact that ADHD, you know, we've been treating it for 60 years at the time, now 70 years, with the two same medications, Adderall, amphetamines, and methylphenidates like Ritalin and Concerta. And the problem has been, and it still is, there's no medication out there that lasts the entire active day. And that's what our goal is. Our goal is to provide a medication that has a fast onset, lasts the entire active day, no booster doses needed, and simply put, as we sat there around the, around the barbecue was, let's do this. Why don't we solve this problem? Yeah. So when I named the company Cingulate, it's because in the prefrontal cortex, the, that's where your cingulate gyrus is, and the, and the anterior cingulate is where all of your executive function occurs. And that was the beginning of Singulate Therapeutics, uh, and now we're public, tra- uh, stick to the ticker CING, right? So we've come a long way, but uh, our goal is really we want to build the best product for patients and providers and make it something that payers want to reimburse for. Dr. Shane Schaefer, Chairman CEO of Singulate, their ticker symbol C-I-N-G. Shane, uh, it, it, when it comes to little kids with, with uh, ADHD and ADD, things like that, do their brains shut off at night when they sleep? Or is it, are they constantly on the hamster wheel? You know, it's, it's a great, great point, great question. So it doesn't, it, it depends on the patient, number one, and it depends on the severity of the disorder. So again, mild ADHD, you know, the first thing I always say, and, and by the way, I'm a pharmacist by training, uh, but I've been in ADHD for, God, 25 years now uh, and, and work with some of the top psychs. So I'm, I call, I'll call it a pseudo psych, mm-hmm. but not an MD. Uh, but the fact is, our doctors talk about this all the time. The mind of an ADHD patient never turns off. And that's why when you look at our pharmacokinetic profile, the way we've designed our medication is so there's a little bit of stimulant uh, in, the, in the body still, in the blood system, which has the ability to help that ADHD patient get to rest, to get to sleep. You don't want blood levels, you know, at midnight, but, you know, eight, seven, seven, eight, nine in the, in the evening, low blood levels will do exactly what you're talking about and help that brain turn off. Hey, so it's, it's I, let me ask you. Can I, let me ask you a question about that because because I know for I, I it's something that I that I I have slayed the dragon so much and I think over the years I've gotten better at it because because you know the, you have to actively you know kill the little black head that you know the monster in men in black that pops up you have to shoot him yep. down every once in a while. Right. But I will tell you I've struggled with sleep my whole life. And, and I'm assuming, because I'm not on any medication for ADHD, um, I, you know, when I took Ritalin as an adult, I felt like it was prescription grade speed. I wanted a couple yeah. beers. It was not a good thing. Like it was like, hey, this feels pretty good. It shouldn't feel right. this good. And, right. and I know what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to, it does the opposite to folks with ADHD or ADD uh, when you yeah. have a, a stimulant like that. Is there a tie-in with your drug potentially, not only with ADHD, but other maladies in, 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 like for sleep, for example? So I just had a conversation with a, a very well-renowned insomnia expert, ironically, last week. Uh, this guy has done amazing work in, in, in the insomnia category. So if you're like me, silly, I mean, here's me. I can get to sleep okay. Me too. But 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, boom, I'm up. I got to turn on Frasier or, embarrassingly, Matlock. Or <laughs> Are you? Wait a second. Love those. And this, is, this mom, isn't the new Matlock either. This is the old one. My mom I, was in the fall asleep in front of Matlock Club. 
Um, yeah. and, that, and by the way, you know, me and Mike and Greg, you know, no, not Greg, me and Mike, you know, by 11 o'clock, we're on our second P. So, <laughs> so, 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 one, so one, one this is why Bloomer doesn't put us on prime time. Um, but yes, Shut. one o'clock, two o'clock is, and I just go, I just want to go. It's the worst feeling. Because being in television and radio my entire career, 4.30 is okay. 4.30, 5 o'clock, but if I wake up at 2, it's I'm 9 times out of 10 done. Miserable. It's miserable. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, gl I'm glad you have that. the Sports Biz Minute brought to you by Price Picks, the largest daily fantasy platform in the world. Sign up today simply at pricepicks.com. We're going to start off with some baseball news. Major League Baseball announcing it will return to having players wear their home and road uniforms during the league's annual All-Star Game beginning in 2025, which was the custom from 1930 to 2019. Additionally, the size of lettering and numbers on jerseys will return to the larger sizes used in prior seasons, something requested by the players. The changes will start during the 2025 season, will be fully implemented by the 2026 season due to production timelines. Speaking of baseball, Shohei Otani, after becoming the first player in Major League Baseball history to hit 50 home runs, still 50 bases in the same season. The Dodgers star player once again has the most popular player jersey in Major League Baseball. Phillies Bryce Harper returned uh, to the top five. Uh, with the second most popular player jersey in the league uh, en route to the Phillies' first NL East championship since 2011. Major League home run leader Aaron Judge secured the number three spot for the second consecutive year after leading the Yankees to an AL East crown. NFL ratings news. The Cowboys' nerve-wracking 2015 victory over the Giants last Thursday set multiple new viewership milestones for Thursday Night Football on Prime Video. The game averaged an impressive 16.22 million viewers. This remarkable number marks an all-time high for a Thursday Night Football broadcast on Amazon, and the company added that the game was also the most streamed NFL regular season game in league history. That is your Sports Biz Minute. Once again, brought to you by the fine people at Prize Picks, the largest daily fantasy platform out there. Simply sign up at prizepicks.com. Once again, here is Sully. Mary, you had a question. Well, a couple of different things, but one is, I think I think you mentioned you would just take the one medication in the morning and then it would time release throughout the day. Is that what you're saying? So here's the cool part about it. And you think insomnia, think ADHD, think cardiovascular disorders, think uh, oral oncology agents, think uh, HIV meds, think anti-infectives. At the end of the day, compliance is important, but at the end of the day, what we really care about is outcome. Am I giving patients the best possible chance to have a better outcome than what is existing today? That's all a patient needs to take. It's about the size of your pinky nail. Mm -hmm. And you should, thanks for showing the, the graphic earlier of what our tablet looks like. That's it. Inside this is this little tablet. And then there the is. third one, you got it right there, there is a tablet so small, I can barely even show it to you. Mm -hmm. We can modify this delivery technology to deliver the right drug at the right time, at the right place, and in the right ratio. I can take two, three, or four of the same or different medications, put them in blends, put them in, in isolation, and then determine exactly when that drug should be released in what style. Do I want to pulse it, or do I want a sustained release? Or do I want a pulse, sustained release, pulse? That's our ADHD product. Each one, each dose release 
as a reason. Why am I doing this? It's all about optimizing patient health. And that's the beauty of this PTR platform. And as, you, and as we kind of alluded to, multiple applications in so many different therapeutic areas. ADHD is a $22 billion category. Uh, that's our first shot at goal. We're really excited about CTX 1301. The data has wow. been incredible. Uh, so that's going to be filed here in, in, in the next few months. I will tell you that um, with particularly within women and older women like me, because I just discovered, I didn't think my daughter had it because I thought it was the little boy in the classroom with the fidget spinner. And it presented yeah. differently in my daughter. And then as I was researching it and learning it, and I was with the doctor answering her questions, and I was like, wait a minute, that's me too. And so yeah. I know a lot of women that are now, you know, later stages going, I have had this my whole life. Yep. So I feel like it's growing exponentially. Is that what you're discovering too? So the, the growth in this market, everyone thinks of this as a childhood disorder. And look, it's when it typically, to your point, absolutely, that's when it gets diagnosed a lot of times. The reality is, just factually, the adult market is double the yeah. size of children and adolescents combined. It's the fastest growing segment. Our product is gonna have eight dosage strengths, 6.25 to 50 milligrams. Why? So that we can optimize every patient, the patient that has severe ADHD or the patient that has mild ADHD. Shane, I got a question for you. Um, in terms of being a publicly traded company, your stock symbol CING, uh, of course, traded, uh, traded on the NASDAQ, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes. How close are you guys, because uh, we just saw the FDA arc of that story, and because yep. it takes a little bit of cake in the bank to run those things. You got a runway to do all this? Uh, talk to us about the FDA and the money in the bank. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in really good shape. We've had a, a very nice run up in, the, in, 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 what, in our business over the last few uh, months. We've hit all of our milestones. You know, we, we look back at uh, when we went public, which was you know, late 21, perfect timing, right? Uh, so it's been a rough, uh, rough go being a publicly traded company. We're working really hard to try to get more fundamental investors to understand our story, to see not only the value in ADHD, but also anxiety, which is our third asset, and then insomnia, et cetera, et cetera. So- you know, it, <laughs> Are you raising your hand? Yeah, tough, I'm like- we have, we have capital, <laughs> we have runway. Uh, we're excited to get to the FDA filing of our of our first asset in the middle part of next year. Shane, do you guys get... do you guys take the risk averse version model and you and you get a bigger company to, to to take this drug to market, or do you do you hire the handsome men and women with the little suitcases that walk in the doctor's offices? How do you go to commercialization with this thing? Great question, Sully. So whole new world, and this is even pre you know pre pandemic. The fact is, you know, the numbers of reps that are out there today is, is minuscule. When I was at Pfizer, you know, we had 30,000 30, reps out there. That number has diminished tremendously. So what we need to do is think about this the most effective way, and that is omni-channel marketing, definitely boots on the ground where appropriate, medical liaisons out there speaking to top-notch physicians and key opinion leaders and influencers when needed, um, and doing it effectively. We're partnering with a company called Indigene. They are the number one company in, the, in, in our space in getting a product to go to market. 19 of the top 20 global pharma companies work with them today. That's our partner, and it didn't cost us a penny to execute that agreement. The infrastructure is built. Now, to that point, we're also talking to other pharmaceutical companies here in the U.S., small and mid-sized companies that maybe will co-promote this product or launch it fully. The point here is we are not commercializing this by ourselves. I'm not building an infrastructure, but we do have plans in place to commercialize it with Indigene, or a third party. Here's the 800 pound gorilla in the room question. Yes, how yep. soon can I get this? Can you send a little packet, get a little envelope Quickly. here? Can we hurry? We, chop, chop. This is This is compassionate treatment so we don't all kill each other. Exactly so right. I like, so you didn't even let me see it. Yeah, how, so what's, what's the time frame you think? I mean, because you gotta have people yeah. knocking on your doors already about that, especially the, the ghost yeah. in the background there. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> can I get some? Um, I'm not, I won't make a funny voice. So reality is, is this, in, in our phase three trial, this was with adults, so many patients were talking to the lead investigator saying, please keep me on this, which yeah. is great to hear wow. and heartbreaking because we can't do it. Yeah. So well, we, our goal is to file our NDA, which is the new drug application in the mid part of next year. So we're talking June, July timeframe. Mm -hmm. And then you got 12, month, 12 months after that for the FDA to uh, do their review of the product and get this product on the market. So we're, uh, we're gonna push as hard as we can. The data has been fantastic. We just want to get this to patients. Shane, will you come in studio sometime? It's not a big ask. It's San Diego, California after all. I know you got a beautiful day out there, but we'd love to have you come in here and hang with us a little bit. I cannot wait to, and uh, I really can. I was talking to Greg and I was like, I, I got to get there. I'm thinking February, Kansas City, February. Uh, that's yeah. right.
Yep, yeah. it's a great time to visit. I'm gonna he, send my, my daughter's a my daughter's a uh, MD of physical therapy in Kansas City. I'm gonna send her over to you, by the way. Right. Uh, awesome. Awesome. You guys, guys, have a chat. We need to chip off the have her talk to you about that. Mary Burr Godwin's new superhero, Dr. Shane Schaefer, <laughs> Chairman CEO, yeah. Singulate. Their ticket symbol. C I N G. Find out.